All right, guys, if you are here, that means you survived the carnage that was week one in the NFL. It's time to scratch and survive next. All right, guys, rough, rough week one for most people in the survivor pools. I guess about most, somewhere between 45, 50% on most pools were eliminated last week. So not quite most, I guess, but uh, depending on the pool, some did get over 50% eliminated. So really an unreal week one. And it wasn't just one team. It was just multiple teams. So that is why we like to have a lot of picks in these. And then we can differentiate our picks a little bit. So we'll uh, hopefully be in, put ourselves in an advantageous situation going forward. I had 130 in my pool that I talk about on here. I thought I had 150, wound up I had 130, and we got close to 8,000. I think two shy, three shy of 8,000 in that pool. I am now down to 71. The pool lost 45%, and I lost um, a little over 50%. So I lose some equity there in that pool. Now, if you're not familiar with equity, I'm going to go over that in a second. First, though, I just want to mention the Sharp app, guys. If you are not watching this inside of the Sharp app, you need to do so. There's a link down below. If you're on YouTube, download the Sharp app. It is absolutely free. Not only are you going to get the Scratching and Surviving, you're going to get all our other shows and content. Plus, if you are in any other type of pools for football and there are sports betting related, pick them pools, things like that, you're definitely going to want the information inside of the Sharp app. So check it out. Props. You guys into props at all. We did. I do a top prop article every day inside of the app. I give what I think the top props of the day are. Usually it's MLB right now. Now that M uh, the NFL has started, I gave out a bunch of props. What I wound up going like 46 and 24, something like that. Uh, 14 and a half units to the positive. I think it was 46 and 24. So that gets posted each and every Sunday. And before I've got one in there for the Thursday night games, as soon as I get all of the props for the uh, Sunday games, I'm going to have them in there. And what I'm going to do is break it up by game for you guys. So if you want to play like some, some parlays and things like that in a specific game, you can take a look at my top props. It's all free inside of the app. So check that out. All right. I was just talking about equity. And if you're unfamiliar with what your equity would be in a pool, real simple. Let's say there were 100 people in the pool. And uh, it really doesn't even matter how many people were in the pool. But there's a couple of ways we could figure out equity. Let's say there was 100 people in the pool. It's a $10 per entry or 100 entries. Let's say $10 per entry. That's $1,000 in the pot. Let's say you have two entries. Right, so when you started, there were 100 people or 100 entries at $1,000. Each one of those entries was worth $10. So really your equity is whatever the buy-in was, assuming there's no sort of uh, VIG being taken out by the, by the owner of the pool. Now, let's say you lost 50%. So you're down to 50 people. Well, the pot is still $1,000, but there's only 50 entries. Every entry you have is now worth $20. If you still have your two entries left, You've got $40 worth of equity. You doubled your equity. So if you were to sell your entry to someone else, you should be able to sell it at the price of whatever your equity is. Now, of course, equity is going to change as the season goes on because it's going to be based on now not only how many people are left in the pot, but how strong of a line or ticket you have. In other words, if you were able to pick all really weak teams for the first six or seven weeks and still survive, well, that's going to be a much more... Uh, it's going to have a much higher equity than someone who picked all favorites doesn't have a lot of good teams left to take, right? So we're going to get into that. And that's actually going to be crucial. If you played a lot of, if you're in a pool where you have multiple entries, like the one I have with 130 entries, deciding on who you're going to take obviously is the utmost importance, but then how are you going to pair them and put them in the lines um, each and every week? So you want to diversify. I like to be diverse here. And we'll talk about it more as we get to maybe like week four or five. But I look at the equity and I gauge equity by the future value of each one of those teams. And I like to keep it somewhere in the middle. So I don't want to get one lineup that's too far chalky. I don't want one uh, lineup or line. I, I call them lines. I don't want long, one line that's just too, uh, that has too many long shots in there, right? So if I get a line, let's say by the time week four or five comes along and it's, just got some really weak teams it's the way it was set up I got two or three really weak teams in there and I've got all the really good teams left to take 
I'll probably come week four, five, six, start looking at taking the better teams in that line, right? Start to cash in some of that equity, so to speak. So we'll get into that at a later time. Let's jump into what we've got going on this week. Let's open up, you know what? Let's open up the spreadsheet first, and then we'll go over to Survivor Grid. So I've got the spreadsheet open here, and um, I was messing around with it before. I've got my 71 entries left. Of course, I'm not going to weight this at zero, but let's just take a look at it at zero for you guys who are now in pools that are potentially, they didn't start out where you want to be chalky, but you might be in a situation now where you might have to start going chalky. Remember, we go chalky when the pool is um, of a smaller size. So if you started with 50 people in a pool and you might possibly be down to 25, you might want to start taking some chalkier picks. I'm in a pool like that. I don't know exactly the number. I have two entries. I went very chalky with my first two picks and, and was able to win them both. I went with Baltimore and uh, Indianapolis counts as a win, even though they tied. I was able to advance two in there, and I think we're probably down to about 30 people or so. So I'm going to continue to be fairly chalky with my picks. I, I could take one where I could take a little bit more risk, and the other one I'm going to be very chalky because there's not that many uh, entries left in there, and it, we may not have to go that deep. So I don't want to look too deep into the future and worry about future value. I want to hit these games now and then see and reassess maybe in week eight, nine, just where I'm at. So smaller pools, again, we're going to go chalky. You may not have started that way, but after week one, we may be looking chalky. Let's go to the, uh, let's go back to the spreadsheet. All right. So we're looking at the sheet here. Now, if you're going to be in, if you're going chalky, it looks like, you know, there's no, there's no real uh, secret. You're going to look for the best line. So the best line right now is the Rams. Rams are the biggest favorite. I've got a minus 497. Again, guys, I, I look for a midpoint on the money line. Open up the Sharp app. Find the money line. Just take a midpoint here. So about four nine, minus 497. So we're about a 5-1 to one favorite in that game over Atlanta. That gives them about an 83 and a quarter percent chance of winning. Obviously chalky. Um, these numbers are coming off of the pick percentages coming off of Survivor Grid. So you see, you've got close to a third of people are taking the Rams. Again, if you're in a, a pool with not many people, you're going to want to be on the Rams. Even though they've got a lot of future value, you're going to want to either take the Rams or Denver against Houston, who Denver, we saw them on Monday night, should have won that game. But they also have over an 80% probability of winning their game. Now, you could go another route, right? Green Bay is in a very similar situation. The only reason it's giving you Denver is just because it beats it out by 0.29 of a percentage, right? So it's going to be, if I was in a, if I was in a chalkier pool or a pool with not a lot of people, I'd still be looking at Denver because I don't think you're going to have as much opportunity to take them in the future. So I still like Denver, even though it's 15, 15.4% uh, taken, but I can totally get behind Green Bay as a game theory sort of play here where less people are taking them. If Denver were to lose, you're going to lose if you had 15 people in a pool, you should lose 7, 8, 10 people or so there. If the Rams were to lose, you're going to lose about, you know, 15 people if these numbers hold. So you do have a chance to really pick up some equity in your pool by taking someone like Green Bay. Uh, if you take Buffalo, not as many people are taking them. Why? Because they have so much future value. I could totally see, depending on how small the pool is, going with Buffalo as well. So you really have to decide for yourself just how large of a pool you're in. But I'd be looking here. I'd be looking at the Green Bay, Buffalo, Denver, Rams in the chalkier of pools. Now, let's go to a situation like I'm in where I've got still 71 entries left. I've got about 4,000 in my spreadsheet. This spreadsheet sometimes takes a while. Not that it matters here. It's not going to change much. But I put the 4,500. I think it's a little less. I think it's about 4,300 people, 4,100, something like that that are left. Um, not going to change our calculations, though, but just to show you what we're seeing. Now, I'm looking at probably doing five different teams. Now, this gets really interesting. So you see Denver is going to be the most used, and the second most used in this scenario is Detroit. Now, do I really want to take Detroit here? Maybe not. Now, I might take them, maybe not for 17 picks, but I'm probably going to sprinkle in a few Detroits. Right? Why? Because this is probably the only time you're going to want to take Detroit all year. Not that you really do want to take them. And for those of you who have one, two, three, five picks, whatever it is, you're not looking at Detroit. 
But with 71 picks, I'm going to probably sprinkle in. Now, 17 might be a little high, but I might sprinkle in a handful here on Detroit just to give it a shot. If I could get by with Detroit, again, that talk we talk about equity. That's going to bring the equity of all those lines up dramatically because now I basically got away with a team there's no chance I'm going to take again. So there's a little bit of a gamble here. The fact that I'm now behind the eight ball a little bit, I'm, I'm, I have less equity than the field because I lost more entries than the field did. I'm more apt to take a little bit more risk here and get myself back to being uh, in the plus on the equity side. If I hit five of these Detroit games, we get some carnage somewhere else in a game where I'm under the market. Now I'm right back in the hunt and I'm, I'm in good shape. So I'm going to consider that. This is, uh, it, it's unique. We usually don't see, especially when you've got all these monster favorites, San Fran, a big favorite. You know, you've got all these teams 75% or better. But again, the spreadsheet is looking at this strictly on this number, this future value number at 325, which means they are they have the worst future value of all the favorites this week. Now, they only have a 54% chance of winning their game. That's why you don't want to go crazy here with Detroit, right? Now, the other teams we're looking at, of course, San Francisco. And when we start looking at future value, that's when Buffalo comes off the board. We don't want Buffalo because of the, the amount of weeks that we'll be able to take Buffalo. Green Bay in a similar situation. We're going to have a lot of opportunity to take Green Bay. Okay, but team like Las Vegas, 68% chance to win. In that AFC West, you're pretty much not taking them in any of those games, so you don't have too much of a chance. Again, 0.9% owned. They're going up against Arizona. No one's going to touch this one. If you're in a larger pool, you're going to have to look at a play like Vegas. Now, the Vegas play, definitely better than the Detroit play. They've got a much better chance to win the game. And not quite as bad a team in the future, but not a lot of future value. Let's jump over to the survivor grid because then we can be able to see exactly what we're looking at on future value. Okay, let's go over Vegas. So you see Vegas here. You've got the Arizona game. They've got nothing that you're even considering here for a while. Tennessee, Denver, Kansas City, a bye, and then Houston in Week 7. So if you're in a large pool you might be able to get away with taking a Vegas and then saving, you know, that week seven, you're going to have options. You'll have Denver. You'll have a shot at Cincinnati. Um, the Chargers play Seattle. There's going to be opportunities there where you don't necessarily need Vegas. And then from week seven on, let the entire pool take take Vegas in week seven. If you get there and possibly you get the upset, you'll be in a better situation on Cincinnati. A lot of people are going to take Vegas come that week because they know Look at the rest of the schedule at New Orleans, at Jacksonville, Indianapolis, at Denver, at Seattle, Chargers, right? Ram, New England. I mean, just none of these games look like games that you're going to target for Vegas. So if you sneak them in here in week two and you get away with it, boy, you're really in good shape. So I like the Vegas side better than Detroit, let's say. But in my pool with so many, so many entries, right? With 71 entries to go, I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of both of these teams. So I'm not going to have as much Detroit, let's say, as 17. But I'm going to maybe get down into the single digits, maybe five Detroits just to just to have it. And then I'll add some in elsewhere. So maybe I'll go, you know, I don't know exactly yet. But I'm definitely going to have at least 10 on Vegas and then sprinkle in the rest here, as you can see. So you've got... The Rams and Denver, San Francisco is a big favorite this week. And again, San Francisco, not nearly as much future value as Buffalo and Denver. So we're, we're really in the larger pools trying to hold off on taking these big teams. So that's kind of where we're at this week. Really, really interesting week. It should be fairly chalky. So, you know, it's going to really, not, it's not going to feel good when you lose with Detroit, when you have the option of taking a bunch of double digit favorites. I get it. But again, guys, we're not trying to win the week we're trying to win the overall pool so what can get us in the most advantageous situation now if i had 100 people in a pool and i was one remaining out of 100 maybe i'm not necessarily looking at going too crazy but i think the vegas one is something you're going to have to consider and i'm going to think more about myself but i think that vegas pick and when we look at it it's really not it's, it's really an option that you have to think about cincinnati as well right you're not going to have a ton let's let's look at what the cincinnati Future of Cincinnati looks like on here. Now, they've got the Jets next week, and that's going to be pretty popular. Let's see what the rest of next week looks like. 
you know, I don't mind looking one week out for sure. You got the Chargers next week with Jacksonville. Minnesota's got Detroit. You know, you always have a lot of options early on because, of course, we haven't taken that many teams. But Cincinnati, I'm not too concerned. I don't have to have them next week. So, you know, sprinkling in some Cincinnati, a lot of people will be on them next week. If they didn't take them this week, uh, this week you'll, you'll see a lot of people on them. Minnesota is going to get a lot of play, especially if Minnesota wins the game this week at Philadelphia. If they can win that game and Detroit doesn't look good, that line's going to probably move even higher. So you'll get a lot of people on uh, that Minnesota game. So there's going to be options next week. So really nothing, there's nothing here, um, you know, other than the fact that Buffalo, you've got, you know, look at all these games. Pittsburgh, the Jets, the Jet, you know, you got the Jets twice. Uh, they're going to have Cleveland. They're at Detroit, Chicago. You know, there's a ton of options for Buffalo. So the longer we could go here with Buffalo in our back pocket, the better. This is just, to me, not a week that you want to take Buffalo. You've got other options. Even if you're in a, a, a situation where you want to go chalk, you could always save Buffalo. You can look towards Denver, look towards the Rams, look towards uh, San Francisco. And... You know, people are on Cleveland, and where do we have them in the spreadsheet? Uh, we're seeing, so Cleveland's being taken in 12.5% of pools. They don't have a ton of future value. So, yeah, you know, when I when I have it out to 100% future value and then seven picks, it does like Cleveland. I might actually move some of the Detroits onto Cleveland. I don't love it, obviously. When you do this, you know, when you play when you play the way I play, there's going to be a lot of picks that you don't necessarily love. That's, that kind of goes par with the course. But we're trying to be contrarian without being stupid, right? So we're trying to just use our leverage in ways that get us in the advantageous position for when we do get carnage, like we did last week, if it unfolds in the way we need it. Like if Indianapolis lost, if you guys follow me with a ton of picks and you spread them out the way I typically do, and Indianapolis lost and then flip it with, if Cincinnati would have possibly won or Denver won, any of those change, we're in an unbelievably strong position because most of the pools had Indianapolis as the number one pick. I think out of 8,000, I had something like 1,500 people took uh, Indianapolis last week and it counted as a win because of the tie, a rule which I hate. So that's giving you guys an idea, I think, of you know where we're at this week. Take a look at it. Of course, down in the comments, I'm going to be able to help you guys much more because you guys give me the specifics on your pool. So uh, that's where we're at. It's going to be a tricky one. I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to be going. I'm going to look at the spreadsheet one more time. I'm going to mess with it. That's the other thing, guys. You know, lines change as the uh, as the games approach. So come Sunday morning, I usually make my final decision. Some of you can't do that. You have to get it in by Thursday night. I like that better. Get it in Thursday night. You've got all the information that everyone else does as of Thursday night, and you roll with it. Um, me, my Sunday mornings are hectic between DFS and sports betting and all these pools that, uh, it does get a little bit crazy. So I try to do this one early. If the lines move anytime after, uh, I start getting working on DFS, I'm kind of stuck with it, but it, it really isn't going to change things much, um, unless we get some sort of a big injury, but a lot of options this week. I'm curious to see what you guys have to say down in the comments. Happy to, uh, address all of your pool questions. As always, guys, and, and hit me up in the Discord. For those of you who download the uh, Sharp app, the guys ask a ton of questions on Survivor Pools in Discord as well. So hopefully I'll see you guys in the Discord. If not, I'll see you here next week, hopefully as a Survivor. Good luck, guys.